Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. We're going to finish off chapter 16, or the chapter on object orientation, by looking at the meaning of case classes. So much earlier in the book, we actually looked at uh, our first example of creating our own data types and grouping data together. And we did that using a case class. And then in this chapter, we introduced using just regular classes. And so this kind of begs the interesting question of what's the difference? What was it that adding that keyword case in front of class uh, did for us? So for example, what is the difference between just saying class dinosaur name string and saying case class dinosaur name string? It turns out that while we never did it earlier, the case classes can be followed by bodies of code. So we could have put stuff in there. We could have added our own methods. Um, what really happened here with the case class is actually there are a number of things. And some of them we can't go into the, the full details on yet because we, we haven't gotten there. Um, one of the things that it did was it added automatically for us a companion object. So when you do say case class dinosaur, you're actually making both a class dinosaur and an object dinosaur. And in some ways, the way you can know that is because I can make, I can instantiate a new dinosaur without calling new. If I got rid of the case here, I would have to say new dinosaur. The way that we get this, remember this is actually invoking the apply method on the companion object. Okay, this is not invoking, uh, this is not directly invoking the uh, new, it's doing new through the apply method on the companion object. And so the, the whole existence of a companion object is part of what comes from having the case here. Another thing would be that if I take res0.name, you notice I can get it out. Whereas if this had been just a regular class and not a case class, this would be an argument that was passed in. It would be accessible locally, but it wouldn't actually become a member and it definitely wouldn't be public. We wouldn't be able to get to the dinosaur's name if we had left off the case here. If we wanted to be able to get to the dinosaur's name, we would have had to put either val or var in front of this. Now, since we can't reassign to it, and even the error message tells us, one of the things that the case class does is it, it effectively sticks the keyword val in front of every argument that gets passed in. So that everything that you, that you send in there becomes both a member of the class and it uh, has a constant value. Um, the other thing, and this is the, the thing that in some ways we haven't really been able to discuss so far, is the fact that you can do pattern matching on this. Um, so let's do uh, I don't know exactly what I want to, to do here. Uh, that'll work. So I want to just show you an example of using a match um, on a dinosaur here. Uh, and so I'm going to match on O and I'm returning a string. And the thing that a case class allows you to do let's just print out name case for anything else. I didn't want that to print. I wanted that. This is going to be an error. Lip. Don't print line name. Let's say dino equals plus name. Case for anything else. Not a dinosaur. And so now I can call match this on number five, when five is not a dinosaur. I can call match this on res zero, and it does. Uh, it finds that it is a dinosaur, and it gives us back it says dino equals Steve. 
we will use a pattern here and we were able to bind names, bind a variable name to, to the arguments of the case class. Had we done this with a regular class, that would not work. Okay, it turns out that the, the code that does that um, actually also goes into the companion object and it's, it's a method that we haven't discussed, uh, and in fact won't discuss in, in this book, uh, it's called unapply. And that's what allows you to, to add pattern matching to things. So the case class gave us a companion object, it gave us, it put an apply method in there, technically put an unapply method in there as well. Um, and it also made it so that all of the arguments that came in were vowels so that we could access them. Uh, another thing that it did for us, and you might recall that one of the other things that we liked about our case classes was the fact that we had a copy method in there. Um, and it, it also makes it so it prints more nicely. In fact, let's, I guess let's go ahead and let's do class dino2 name string. Just to make it clear, I'm gonna make a separate one of these, val d2 equals new dino2 of mark. So first off, if I were to try this without the new, we have an error because we don't have that, uh, that companion object. Whereas if it were a case class, that works just fine. When we do use the new, note that it prints very oddly. Uh, we will see uh, soon how we can, in our own classes, do this. We need to put an extra method inside of our classes so that they print out nicely instead of printing out using this kind of default um, print value. Um, the, uh, so we're able to instantiate like this. Uh, we could not use with this, we could not make a pattern for it. Um, I guess I could go up and retype in match this just to show you that it is not going to be happy. A dino two of name goes to dino2 equals plus name. And in some ways, this is kind of pointless because it, I don't want to put too much effort into it. It is not going to work. Okay, So, so here we have this problem. It's like, you can't do this. Uh, and then on the other side, we get another error is because this didn't work, the name was not bound to anything. And so it has no idea what we're talking about over here. So that was the other thing that a case class gave us. And then there's also the copy. D2 dot copy with name equal to Chris doesn't work. Okay. So copy is not there by by default. So those are a number of things that the case class gave you. <clears throat> you should only really use case classes for things that are immutable. Uh, but if you have something if you have something that you might have written as a normal class, but you would like to have, for example, the automatic uh, companion object uh, with the apply method, you would like to do the pattern matching with unapply, you would like to have a copy because if it's immutable and you're not changing it, it's helpful that you could make copies where you only vary, for example, one field in there. Um, if you want the capabilities of a case class, but maybe you need to add some extra methods on your own, feel free to make it a case class and, and add those methods on your own. Uh, because you, you can see exactly what it is the case class is adding for you. And so it's not completely just a magical uh, black box. It's just a normal class with a few extensions that they put on there to help make it easier. Actually, I guess the, the other thing is just, <clears throat> I can't even get to the name here because the case class made the name of Val and I didn't do that on the basic class declaration. So hopefully that helps you see what the difference is and uh, makes it clearer how case classes work. Uh, and when we come back next time, we will continue delving further uh, in and go to the next chapter. See you soon.